In this lecture, we're going to talk about the instruction set architecture for the MIPS processors. So in this class, we're going to be covering the MIPS processor, and now we're going to introduce the instructions that the processor uses at the low level and explain to you how they work. So we're going to start off today by going through how a program executes. So this is a review of how a program is compiled and how those instructions are used in the processor. We're then going to start talking in more detail about MIPS instructions in particular. So we're going to spend some time looking at the memory organization of MIPS. We're going to talk about the register file, which is small and fast, versus the main memory, which is large and slow. Then going to go through three important classes of instructions. The first one are data operations. This is addition, subtraction, multiplication. These are the operations, or the instructions, that actually do the computation. The next class are data transfers. These are instructions that move data around in the processor. In particular, they're going to move data from the main memory to the register file and back. Then I'm going to talk about the last class of instructions, which are sequencing instructions. These are the instructions that are used to control the flow of the program. So if, then, else, and loops. So today we're going to cover the instructions in general, and then talk in detail about three particular types of instructions. So before we get into that, let's review how a processor is programmed. So here we have a C program, it's a simple loop. While i is not equal to 2, we're going to increment i. So the first thing that happens to run this program is you need to compile it. So the compiler is going to take this description of the program and convert it into a low-level assembly description. So the assembly code is using the instructions of the processor to define the program. This is then put into an operating system loader, which loads the program into memory. And here you can see the instructions have been loaded into particular addresses in the memory of the computer. Now let's take a look at what the compiler did here. So we've got one instruction that we wrote in our code in our C program, which is i equals i plus 1. And here's how the compiler converted it. It converted it to r0 equals r0 plus 1. This r0 is a register file entry. So the compiler decided to take the variable i that we named and put it into the register 0 for the process of the program. Here's another part of the program to look at, the loop part, while i does not equal 2. So the compiler took that and it converted it to two instructions. It converted it to one instruction which subtracts 2 from register 0, or i, and then another instruction which checks if the result is 0. So this is checking if i equals 2 by first subtracting 2 and then checking to see if it's 0. So if it is 0, this then jumps to done. So it jumps to the end of the program down here, which is what we want. So if i equals 2, we want to go to the end of the program. Here we check if i is 2, and we go to the end of the program. If that's not the case, then we go on and do the zero, r0, plus r0, r0 equals r0 plus 1 again. That's the i equals i plus 1 again. And we jump back up and repeat our loop. So let's now walk through a little bit of how the processor actually executes a program. So here are the main parts of our processor. We've got our memory, which you can see here has our program in it and some of our data. We've got a place to store our current instruction. We've got some logic, which decodes the current instruction and controls the rest of the processor. We have some data registers, or register file, which can hold a little bit of data to work on. And we have some compute logic, which is responsible for doing addition, subtraction, multiply, the sort of the work of the processor. So let's walk through what we do when we execute. So the first thing we do is we load the instruction. So we're going to access the main memory, and we're going to load the instruction into our current instruction register. Then we're going to figure out what to do. That is, we're going to take that instruction, we're going to send it to the control logic, which is going to decode the instruction so that it can tell the rest of the processor what to do. We then use that control logic to figure out what data to use. That is, we control the data registers to figure out what data they should use and do the computation. So the control logic then controls the compute part here and tells it what data to use and what operation to do. So maybe it's doing an add or subtract. Finally, the result of this computation goes back to the control to allow it to determine what the next instruction is, and the whole process repeats itself over and over again. So in the lecture today, you're going to see many of the real details for the MIPS processor. We're going to talk about the real MIPS instructions, talk about the way the memory in the real MIPS processors are organized, the real MIPS register file, and a little bit about the current instruction and control logic. But before we get going on that, here's a question. So what is stored in the data registers? 
So here are the data registers in my processor. What are we storing there? Well, what's stored in here is the current data. The data registers, or the register file, store the pieces of data that we're using for our computation. So there aren't a lot of these, so anything that doesn't fit in here has to be loaded and stored back and forth from memory, and that takes a long time. 